Peter Windmill. How pleasant of you to join us. This party's over. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. We're continuing our series of Tales of the Jedi, Episode 3. Choices. This is another Dooku episode. I do love me my Dooku episodes. Follows Mace Windu and Jedi Dooku as they are doing a mission to find out the happenings around a mysterious death of another Jedi, a Luminara looking mofo. And as they get to the planet, they uncover through clever deducing that the Jedi was actually murdered by the people that she was traveling with. There was a, an attempted coup. Yeah, the senator was held hostage because the senator started to allow corporations to plunder the natural resources of the planet, and the people living there didn't approve, understandably. So they decided to say, enough of that. We're gonna call the shots from now on. We're gonna hold you hostage, basically. The Jedi uncover that. There's a little bit of the skirmish, and then they arrest the perpetrators, and then they go back to Coruscant, because the Jedi passed away. They have a nice Jedi funeral, and and then Mace Windu is promoted, which is why we see him in The Phantom Menace on the Jedi Council. I really like the line near the beginning where Dooku and Mace Windu are flying in their ship, which I like too. It was different, so it was creative, but it had a similar color scheme to the ship at the beginning of the Phantom Menace, so just kind of like diplomatic ships that were used by the Republic at that time. As they're talking about the mission, Mace Windu is more about He's a, he's a rules guy. He's more about the code. That's kind of how he structures his conduct. Duke is more of a rebel. Mace Windu at one point like, We cannot involve ourselves in local political skirmishes unless requested by the Jedi High Council or Senate. And Dooku responds with, My friend, your devotion to rules is sometimes inspiring and sometimes maddening. I like that there was a nice bowl full of nuance in that that statement, right? Because not only do you find parts about everyone that you know, you know, you can disagree with the, how they go about things, but sometimes you can actually like parts of their character, depending on the situation, or depending on their, your mood, or depending on many different things, and other times, it doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for them, or whatever. I liked uh, seeing that. Some good dialogue. I also liked, again, the, the political aspect. I was even impressed. The whole thing about off-world corporations coming into a planet with bountiful resources, but doesn't have much in the way of protecting itself from greedy interests, which, you know, reflects our own world, which I think is what sci-fi should do. Good avenue to kind of explore things going on in our world, but doing it through, you know, fiction. Basically, like, neo-colonialism, the way of powerful interests just doing whatever they want, exploiting other people's resources, the issues that come with foreign interests, influencing a local area, local planet, and their politics, and, uh, and then people wanting to actually uh, take a stand, defend what they see as their rights, defend their land, defend themselves. And so I liked when Dooku has the talk with the prisoner, and now it's starting to build on Dooku's questioning more and more how connected the Jedi are to the Republic, which seems less and less to serve the people. So I like that it adds again to Dooku's questioning of things and reasons for leaving the Jedi Order. It kind of builds on that idea of the Jedi becoming too closely connected, kind of a facet of the Republic system. They kind of have play, start to play more and more about like a paramilitary part of the Republic and, and less about resolving conflicts and more just kind of allowing the Republic to continue you know, ignoring issues going on or to perpetuate other issues, the Jedi are starting to lose sight of their purpose. So Dooku is starting to have more and more cognitive dissonance about the things he's set out to do versus what feels, what he's feeling going on inside. I, I liked uh, the conversation he has with the prisoner, that relatability to someone who, even though you might not necessarily agree with their methods or their ideology in general, you know, but he still, I think, maybe feels some camaraderie to someone where basically everyone else in the Jedi Council or the Jedi Order at this point thinks of Dooku as kind of a, a maverick, you know, a outlier. Felt good for Dooku to feel some camaraderie with someone else who is trying to take matters into their own hands when they see an injustice happening, and he respects that. And there is that kind of feeling of connection to someone that you recognize also is dissatisfied with the way things are, you know, wants to create some meaningful change. Again, you don't necessarily have to agree with them completely on how they go about it or how they even want to shape things, but you just appreciate, like, I see that you're motivated and, and kind of want to do something, take action. You know, and I respect that, and that's something that maybe I aspire to do. So that felt very real and natural for Dooku to kind of have that moment of connection or inspiration, validation from the prisoner. I don't condone your methods, but you had every right to protect your planet. Make sure your people don't lose heart and evolve. 
of Samash. It is the only way you will truly have victory. I say that for all of us. People can do things, can be taking things into action, action in their lives, and you can see them doing that, and it can maybe even inspire you to want to be more active in your own life, regardless of if your situation is maybe, you, if your situation, your life can be very different from theirs, but it can still inspire you to kind of play a more active role, more, be more present in, in your life, you know? So I liked all that. And, you know, of course I liked Mace Windu and Dooku, not only as a pairing, because we've just never seen that before. Mace Windu's purple lightsaber and Dooku's curved blue lightsaber going at it was fun. Also builds on uh, the stuff that is kind of touched on in Attack of the Clones, just kind of fills in little tidbits of the prequels that were just kind of there for flavoring. The few times when Mace Windu references Count Dooku in Attack of the Clones, like says, You know, my lady, Count Dooku was once a Jedi. He couldn't assassinate anyone. It's not in his character kind of defends Dooku. It's interesting to see why he would do that, to see that they had something of a relationship at one point in school. And also, Dooku refers to Mace Windu as an old friend. Master Windu, you have fought gallantly. Worthy of recognition in the archives of the Jedi Order. Now, it is finished. Surrender and your lives will be spared. We will not be hostages to be bartered, Dooku. Then, I'm sorry, old friend. At one point, being teammates and being uh, members of the same order. So it's cool to see this episode, for me, kind of brings up memories of Attack the Clones, where Dooku is talking to Mace Windu, and Mace Windu talking about Count Dooku, and it just adds a little, a little extra, mm. Mm. A little extra zestiness, a little extra texture to already existing Star Wars stuff that's out there. I like that. That's about it. But yeah, what did you guys think? That was just some things that I thought of or reflected on for the third episode of Tales of the Jedi. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. We'll do some chit-chat. Let's allow ourselves to blether a little bit in the comments, shall we? Thanks for watching. See you next time. That's a wrap. Peace. I am told you will be presented with Master Catry's council seats. I will. Dooku, I will speak to the council on your behalf. How kind of you, Master Jedi. I've been looking forward to this.